Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Revitalized Professional Development Program webinar. My name is Kevin Brown. I'm a realtor and a managing broker and a member of the Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board. I've been a realtor for eight years and a professional development program instructor for nearly five years. I've been, uh, during which time I've helped write course material for the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver and contributed to course development for BCREA. I'm excited to be here today again hosting this webinar, sharing more about the progress that's been made in revitalizing the professional development program or PDP for realtors in British Columbia. I'm joined today by Joanna Peterson, Education Manager at BCREA, and Jennifer Lynch, Realtor, Managing Broker, and Past President of BCREA. So good morning to you both, and thank you so much for joining us today. Great. Thank you, Kevin. As the Education Manager at BCREA, I oversee the education as a core BCREA service area and lead our education team. We work together with member boards to develop and deliver education at the board level and across the province. I've been at BCRA for just over a year now, and in that short time, we have witnessed phenomenal change, both in the industry as a whole and in education specifically. I'm excited to share an overview of the revitalized professional development program framework for realtors in the province, both with you today and in the coming months. Jennifer? Great. Uh, good morning, Joanna and Kevin. It's so nice to be joining you here today and to all our viewers as well to discuss the future of professional development. Thank you, Kevin, again, for agreeing to be our host today. As Kevin mentioned, I'm Jennifer. I've been a realtor for nearly 25 years and a managing broker for over 20. During my time in organized real estate, I became heavily involved in professional development. I believe education is a great way to support realtors and supporting realtors is something that I am very passionate about. I've had the great opportunity to participate in many aspects of professional development, starting my career and even continuing on through my career as a learner, um, serving on professional development committees, working as a subject matter expert, course consultant, and writer. And currently, I'm an applied practice course instructor. One of my highlights in my time in working with BCREA was working with BCREA and the member boards and realtors throughout the province in the creation of the existing PD framework. I believe there is a real benefit to having a great professional development program in helping raise professional practice. So when I learned that BCREA and the member boards were revitalizing the PD program in BC, I knew it was something that I wanted to be involved in to help provide input on behalf of realtors throughout the province. It's been exciting to see the new framework taking shape, providing realtors more personal choice over their professional development that is relevant to their practice and that they will truly benefit from. It fosters a culture of lifelong learning. It's really a new approach to the program and one that I'm really excited to be sharing with you, with you here today. Great, thank you both. Before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items to mention. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel and registrants will receive a link to the recording in your webinar follow-up email from Zoom. To submit your questions during the webinar, hit the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. So I want to emphasize that. It's at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to see you guys submit your questions throughout the webinar this morning, not wait till the very last minute. So as things are prompted to you, please use that Q&A feature. Uh, because we have a large number of attendees today, we'll not be using that chat feature. It's actually better for us if you send through your questions as they come to mind. So more emphasis on that. I'd just like to see you guys submit those questions as they come to mind throughout the webinar here today. And then Marianne, our, our communications coordinator, she'll be monitoring the incoming questions and sending them to me so that we can answer as many as possible live after the presentation. With so many attendees, we probably won't be able to get all the questions during today's session. However, we will use all the questions that were submitted during the webinar session on May 2nd and the ones that are uh, submitted to us today to assess what themes are emerging and what realtors need the most, where they need the most support. We'll use the questions and comments you submit today to develop resources to support you during the transition to the new program. We'll also share written responses to the questions that we answer live today, as well as some of the questions we don't have a chance to get to on RealtorLink. Today's webinar will be roughly 45 minutes with the presentation detailing the new PDP framework uh, to start So followed, and then followed by a question and answer period. So with that, I'll hand it off to our lovely panelists. Thanks, Kevin. And thank you to everyone for attending today's session. As Kevin mentioned, we're going to start with a presentation on the new PDP framework, what's changing and what it means for you. During today's presentation, we'll offer a broad overview of the new framework for professional development in British Columbia. 
Specific details of the program are in the works and are still being finalized. This is an early preview of what's to come. Ultimately, we hope that at, at the end of today's session, you'll have a better understanding of what the new PDP will look like. And with your questions and comments that we receive, we'll have more input on the development of resources uh, for support for real to support realtors and managing brokers. Jennifer? Great. Thanks, Joe. We're going to start off today's presentation by taking a look at professional development in a broad sense, as well as what it means to realtors specifically. Then we'll go into a brief overview of the reasons behind the change and the consultation process, followed by details on what's changing and what to expect during the transition. After that, we'll be opening it up to your questions. Great. So professional development, what is it and why does it matter? Professional development refers to a wide variety of specialized training, formal and informal education that is intended to improve professional knowledge, competence, skills and confidence beyond the minimum requirements. It is key to professional success. As it opens up new opportunities, gives you a competitive edge, increases confidence, enhances and helps effectiveness and efficiency in what you do. It can increase personal and work satisfaction and increase your awareness of trends in the industry. This awareness of changing industry trends is so important in our highly changing environment. The pace of change in the real estate industry is probably faster than it's ever been. And this is a feature of the new normal. Actively pursuing relevant and meaningful professional development provides you with opportunities to stay relevant and up to date. It's an ongoing process that continues throughout our careers. Professional development is an integral part of professionalism and can lead to increased public confidence in individual professionals and the profession and the industry as a whole. There are several, several reasons why it's time for us to update our professional development program. Ultimately, it's time for a refresh. BC's 11 real estate boards and BCREA signed a memorandum of understanding outlining our current program framework in 2013. This agreement is up for renewal. The real estate industry has also changed immensely and is continuing to change, and we need a PDP that is flexible and adaptable to a changing environment. For example, the Real Estate Council of British Columbia is taking over responsibility for all aspects of mandatory licensing education by the end of 2019. This means that the council will take control of the applied practice course as well as legal update. The relicensing education program will be entirely separate from professional development programs by the end of 2019. We need a framework for, pro for a program that is flexible to the environment, as I've mentioned before. And finally, what we know about how realtors want to learn and access learning is growing and changing, and we need to keep up with that. We need a program that can adapt to your changing needs, and that has been, and that has been a key driver in what this framework looks like. So what does this mean for realtors? Council's ownership of mandatory licensing education is a great opportunity for us to underline how realtors, with their commitment to standards of professionalism that go beyond mandatory licensing requirements, adds value to their clients. At the same time, it's our opportunity to make sure professional development better meets realtor needs. That means offering the flexibility of choice, enhancing professionalism at all stages of their careers, and also recognizing that classrooms aren't the only place where we learn. Who was consulted? When it comes to understanding and, and meeting realtor needs, the obvious place to start with was realtors. As a realtor, I certainly had my own thoughts and firsthand experience on where I thought PDP could better support us. That's why I jumped at the chance to be part of the steering committee set up in fall of 2018 to oversee the project. Since then, the steering committee, which is comprised of BCREA representatives and representatives from your local real estate boards, has engaged with realtors through focus groups and surveys to understand how we could make PDP truly more innovative, flexible, and realtor-focused. We've also gathered feedback from managing brokers and instructors and course designers from across the province to make sure we were seeing all pieces of the puzzle. Using this input, we built out a business plan, which was approved in principle at the joint meeting with BCREA and the real estate board leadership at the end of March. I'm really excited about the changes that are coming and I hope you will be too. I'll hand it over to Joanna to dive into the new PDP framework. Thank you, Jennifer. A key element of the new PDP framework is it identifies that professional development goes beyond the minimum. 
For example, education that licensees complete as a requirement to earn and maintain their license will not be included as part of the professional development program. This means that legal update as a requirement for licensing renewal will no longer be part of the PDP by the end of this year. Another change is that requirements for the program will be based on hours of development rather than credits in one hour increments. There will be 18 hours of required and reported professional development in two categories. The first category is accredited learning that will make up at least 12 of those hours. It will be similar to what we now currently call category B courses, but will have broader guidelines of what can be included. The second category is self-directed learning, which will make up a minimum We'll, which will make up six hours. This is what is new and I'm really excited about, and we'll talk more about it in a moment. The two year time frame for PD within your current licensing cycle will not be changing. Additionally, development of programming specifically designed to support new entrants into the profession and ensure they are more practice ready will be looked at next year and will be part of phase two of, an, of the new program. We'll keep you informed as more progress is made in that area. So let's take a closer look at the 12 hours of accredited professional development that will focus on skills specific to realtors. These accredited opportunities will contribute to the fundamental skills, experience, and knowledge required of the profession. They will largely include topics and content areas that enhance the fundamental skills required of a realtor and provide enhanced value to your clients, similar to what we call Category B within the current program. However, as I mentioned before, the guidelines for accreditation and what will be included in this category will be broadened and it will allow for more regional specific content as well as for more timely issues uh, to be included in the category. In addition to existing courses on agency, disclosure, ethics, contracts, standard forms, statutory requirements, it also includes uh, courses providing more specific product and transaction related content areas such as building design, property valuation, forms of ownership, tenancies, and risk management, and many more. I want to highlight that as part of the revised framework, there will be increased availability of accredited offerings for realtors around the province. All real estate boards and VCREA will have an opportunity to develop and or accredit professional development opportunities that will meet their members' needs. Jennifer? Great. Now I'm going to speak to the six hours of self-directed learning that really emphasizes what an individual realtor may need for their personal success. As a realtor, I think self-directed learning is a real game changer. It recognizes that everyone learns differently. It's realtor-driven, flexible, and individualized. For the first time, we'll be able to choose professional development based on our individual needs and learning that we feel will contribute to our personal success in the profession. The introduction of self-directed learning allows us to be recognized in the form of PD hours for the learning we already do. And that's really key because one of the things that we saw in the survey we conducted was that a significant amount of realtors already engage in self-directed learning. While only six hours will be required in the new program, all hours of self-directed learning can be tracked. And under the new framework, we're encouraged to take as many hours of learning opportunities as we feel are valuable personally and professionally. This aspect of the new framework recognizes that learning does, uh, doesn't just happen in a classroom. I'll let Joanna talk a little bit more about that. Great, thanks. Well, classrooms can offer exceptional learning experiences and they will remain as an integral part of the program. We acknowledge that learning also goes beyond that. And so when we say beyond the classroom, here are some of the things that might be considered eligible for self-directed professional development hours under the new program. It could be conferences, panel discussions, webinars, brokerage or franchise training, workshops or seminars, or online learning. So you might be wondering, how do I know if a learning opportunity can count towards self-directed PD hours? As a starting point, ask yourself, does this learning opportunity enhance my professional practice? Does it add value to me as a realtor and or my clients or the public? Secondly, is the learning opportunity verifiable? Can I confirm that I participated and completed this learning opportunity? And thirdly, is the learning opportunity auditable? Should an audit occur, is there documentation I can confirm that I have completed it? 
In the coming weeks and months, we will be developing and providing guidelines to support you in identifying hours for self-directed opportunities. So stay tuned to learn more. Now I want to go back to the idea of realtor professionalism for a minute. For me, while flexibility and choice is really exciting, rigor and quality is still key. We heard that message again and again in our consultation with realtors and managing brokers. That's why self-directed PD must enhance professional practice, be verifiable, and be auditable. Well, with professionalism and standards being key drivers for the revised framework, it's important to understand that some things won't be recognized under self-directed, such as reading, volunteering, professional development that can't be verified or audited, professional development that does not enhance a realtor's professional practice, such as basket weaving, and as mentioned before, mandatory licensing education or education taken as part of disciplinary measures is not included. While those might be wonderful things and we would encourage you to pursue them, they will be not recognized under the new program. So what types of things might fit? Uh, it's really up to you as long as it's relevant in enhancing your professional practice and it's verifiable and auditable as Jennifer mentioned. But here are some things that have come up in the conversations we've had already. Home photography or video, realtor safety, business development, home staging, social media, feng shui, real estate investing, technology, and there's many more. So let's take a look at what this means for you. I want to start off by saying that throughout our process, we have emphasized how vital it is that there is minimal disruption to realtors along the way. The targeted launch date for the new PDP is January 1st, 2020. Over the coming months, you can expect more engagement and information from all of us at BCREA, as well as your member boards. We're working on resources for realtors on all things related to the transition to the new program. Questions and comments we received today will help inform those resources and we will build those out for you. We will also be on the road visiting brokerages, uh, member boards, and reaching out through social media, newsletters, and blog posts. And returning to the principle of minimal disruption to realtors, any PDP credits realtors have earned in the current program as of December 31st, 2019, will be directly converted into accredited hours under the new framework as part of that transition process. So you won't miss out on hours of all the learning you've already completed this year, nor do you need to change plans for any learning that you have planned for the remainder of this year. They will all be recognized as part of the transition program or part of the transition to the new program. I'll also add that if you plan on taking legal update between now and December 31st, 2019, it will be recognized as part of that transition to the new program as six hours of accredited PD under the new PDP framework as part of that transition. To wrap things up, we hope that this presentation has been useful in helping you better understand the direction of the new PDP framework. This webinar marks the beginning of an ongoing conversation around the new PDP, and we will be providing you with many more touch points over the coming weeks and months, as well as information and resources as they become available to support you through this transition. Thank you, Jennifer and Joanna. That concludes the presentation portion of the webinar, and we're now gonna move on to the question and answer period. Please submit your questions. Some of you have already been doing this, that's great. Using the Q&A feature, if you haven't done so already, while Marianne reviews your questions, we've got a few that are prepared in advance that we have commonly heard. I'm going to start things off with a couple of those. You mentioned mandatory licensing education is no longer counted towards the new framework. Does this mean that legal update will not be included? Yes. So mandatory licensing education is not included. Le um, the minimal education requirement for maintaining your license in the province with the Real Estate Council of British Columbia is not included in the new P professional development program. But let's look a little bit closer at that. Licensees are required to take legal update once per licensing cycle, which is two years. So that course, of course, would not be included in the new uh, program. However, there are many realtors that choose to take uh, legal update more than once. They choose to take it each year. The second time that they might they take it in their licensing cycle would not 
be a requirement for their licensing, it would be extra over and above. And as such, it would be included in the new professional development framework. Okay, good answer. So if realtors no longer receive credits for legal update, does this mean that they will have to take more courses to fulfill their PDP requirements? Yeah, great question and one we've heard a lot. Um, maybe yes, maybe no, it depends. Um, it depends uh, what you are already doing as a realtor. So focus groups and surveys that we've um, had so far um, and what we've learned from talking to realtors and managing brokers is that many realtors are already pursuing professional development over and above and outside the, the current PDP program. So um, for many of you, who those pursuits that you're already doing may be captured in the self-directed category in the new program. However, for realtors that are currently doing the bare minimum, uh, they may have to do more, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, rising tides raises all boats. Uh, so it's important to know, um, with the increased flexibility and opportunities of the new program, hopefully realtors will be inspired to pursue opportunities that are meaningful and impactful, valuable to them, their business, and their clients. Okay, so realtors are going to start to apply self-directed hours from the categories that you provided for earlier, good examples. How is anybody going to know that they've completed those courses, the additional yeah. hours required for that self-directed program? Yeah, great. Uh, there will be a reporting system. Each realtor will report their own self-directed hours through their primary member board. Um, it'll be, there'll be a consistent uh, expectation across the province with all boards. However, it might look slightly different at each board. We're still working behind the scenes to develop that system, and we'll be sharing more of that as it's finalized. Okay, so a lot of realtors have taken courses this year. We did a course yesterday at the Vancouver board, and they're wondering, courses that they take this year, will those be counted towards the new program? Yes. <laughs> Minimal disruption to realtors um, has been a key, a key component of this new framework. There has been a lot of change. Um, we know that. And so um, in transitioning to the new program, we have agreed as part of that transition, any PDP credits that you earn that are recognized in the current system would be directly transitioned into hours into the new program. So what that means, legal update, if you've taken it this year, PDP courses you've already taken this year or that you will take until December 31st of this year, those will be counted and in the new year, they will be transitioned to hours. So a six credit course would be trans uh, transitioned into a six hours in the new program and you'll get recognized for that. Great, good answers, Joanna, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna to get to some of the questions that are coming through on the feed now here. So. Uh, one of the questions we have coming in, will there be more courses that are designed specifically for managing brokers? I think yeah. under the new system, it will really open up that, that opportunity for managing brokers to either take more opportunities, whether it be in accredited learning or in self-directed, because they can actually choose what learning opportunities are important for them. Yeah, and I, I think what will, um, there, there definitely, we've heard that managing brokers want more um, education, more support, more professional development. And with the new framework, it creates more flexibility for us to create opportunities that will be recognized and accounted in the, in the new system. And so, for example, if a managing broker wanted to take a course in something in accounting or in financial management or in HR policies or, you know, the list goes on of, about people and who get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and those would be recognized in that self-directed. So I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, for managing brokers to identify where there are gaps in their own knowledge or where they really want to, um, to develop themselves personally or want their, their brokerage to develop. Great, Good. excellent. I'm, I'm, I know brokers and, and realtors are excited about that. Uh, some, a few questions that are pretty much the same sort of the same context here, a lot of realtors are asking, how are these hours going to be tracked? And you've mentioned verifiable, the, the auditable requirements for the courses that people take, the hours that they accumulate, and the self-directed category, how are those going to be tracked? How are they verified? How is that audited? Yeah, so the exact mechanism of what that will look like, we're building that out and we will be over, over the coming months. Um, but there will be a minimum requirement of information that, that each realtor will need to provide and they will submit into their member board. Um, and then their member board will receive that. And it might look a little bit different depending on which board that you have, but there will be minimum details and it'll all be self-reported. And so the realtor would go in and log those hours through the, the reporting system. 
And I think just to add on to that, for realtors that don't want to self-report, they could take all their learning opportunities and accredit it as well. And that way it'll be tracked automatically by the member boards. So there's lots of opportunities there as well. Okay, so the self-directed learning is optional. It's not mandatory. They could continue to take the professional development programs through the courses that are offered by BCRE or member boards. Absolutely. They could take all 18 hours in accredited learning should they choose. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. So I just wanted to clarify that, that it's a full 18 hours, tw a minimum of 12 would be in the accredited, but if they wanted to do 14, 16, 18 of those hours in courses that have been um, developed and accredited and recognized by BCREA and the member boards to meet a certain level of quality and rigor, and um, then absolutely, and we encourage that, but we also encourage realtors to self-identify where they know that they need to develop to develop their practice, to support their clients, and to support their business. Well, so, what's... so it's flexible for them in that, in that aspect. Yeah, the flexibility is a real great aspect of the program because it allows us to expand and move into territory that is verifiable and mm -hmm. uh, auditable and, uh, and look at different material that's just not currently available with BCREA or the member boards. Mm -hmm. so that's excellent. Okay, so will the, the Real Estate Council of BC, <clears throat> I love this question, this kind of helps bring some clarity here. Will the Real Estate Council of BC uh, be uh, administering, responsible for administering the new PDP program? No, so the professional development program is part of BCREA and the 11 member boards. It's what we've collectively developed and deliver um, there. Where the council's role is, is in the licensing education. And so with that, we're looking at the applied practice course that new entrants are required to take to enter um, the profession, as well as the legal update course and any other mandatory course that the regulator um, requires. For example, the course that was introduced this summer um, on agency and disclosure. That's a council course. It's a requirement for licensing. That would be council. PDP program, BCREA, and your member boards. Okay, so the PDP program is really the benefit of the realtor brand that adds the additional value to licensees that are uh, in operating and trading services in the province. Absolutely. It's a, it's a real commitment for, from realtors to, to sort of practice at that higher level and commit to being realtors um, to add value to their client. I agree. Okay, if you take a self-learning course that is longer than six hours, can you or can a realtor use the extra hours for the next cycle? No, um, it would be in your current licensing cycle, so it would add up. Um, one thing I encourage, though, is through the reporting uh, structures to record those hours um, and, and recognize that. And, and it might be a really rewarding thing to see over time how, many, how much commitment that realtors are actually putting in that when it's recorded and reported in this way. But, of course, for the program, it's 18 hours um, for that two-year licensing cycle, and, and you can't carry it over very similar to the, the current program. Yeah, we are very much encouraging um, realtors to seek out as many learning opportunities as possible and hopefully beyond even the 18 hours that are set for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the six hour self-directed learning opportunity is, is really a launching pad for them to do that. It really is. Yeah, yeah I like the way you said that. I think that it is, it's a launching pad. It's like, it's here, here's where to start. And then when, when you see that the opportunity the opportunities that are out there and where you can benefit yourself and your business, um, you know, and, and where you can explore. I think that gets, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Super common question. If a realtor has already taken legal update for this license cycle, will they have to take the new course if their license is due for renewal after December 31st? Okay. So, so in the, do you want to, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get lost on dates here. So currently in the new, in the, in the current program, um, I want to make sure that I get this right. So um, realtors are required to take legal update as part of their licensing in this cycle. So in, in a two year cycle, they were required to take two year cycle. They were regardless of when their um, expiry date is or the license renewal date, sorry. Um, they're required to take legal update once. And that will remain true because that's with the Real Estate Council of British Columbia. So um, regardless of when that falls, it's legal update once per two year licensing cycle. Right. If they've registered and completed it prior to December 31st, they're getting hours. That those hours will transition into the new PVP 
um, framework. So yeah. they will actually get credit for those legal updates that have been taken this year. Yeah. In the PDP program. So, and, and we've done that as part of the transition, as part of minimal disruption, so that it won't impact people differently depending on when their license renewal date is and when in the year they've chosen to take legal update. For this transition, we, we've recognized it to, to make it um, seamless. Yeah, I think that's really important to clarify. So what Jennifer was saying and Joanna is that if you have PDP or if you have a legal update inside of this cycle before the new program launches, those PDP hours that were required to take legal update will be transferred into the new program. However, the new program will not acknowledge legal update as our league requirements. Is that right? After January 1st. So after yeah. January 1st, no hours will be allocated for the legal update course. But if you take legal update prior to, you will you will receive six hours of credits into the new program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was much more clear than I did. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> no, I just have my, we have my brain. And, and I just, it doesn't always work the same, so I want to make sure that I understand no, I as well. No, I That's good. It. Uh, so, are you saying the requirement is a total of 18 professional development development hours, of which up to six can be self-directed? The way this person is understanding this is that at first, based on the slides, was that it was 18 plus six for a total of 24. No, no. So the first statement is correct. That what it, um, the requirement for a total of P 18 PD hours, of which six can be self-directed. Yeah. So total of 18 collectively. Right. Absolutely. So I like this question, uh, just grabbing it as much as we possibly can here. Is this course today going to be counted for an hour of professional development? We're going to stop at 59 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so we're still in the, in, the, um, in the current program. We're not in the new program. So today, you, you don't get an hour for today. Sorry, but thank you for being here anyway. Um, in, in the new model, um, um, self-directed hours are in one hour increments. So it needs to be a full hour. We're not going to be nickel and diming for 15 minutes here or there or whatever. It's, it's a full collective hour of learning um, would be would be registered and then those three quick um, key questions that Jennifer mentioned does it enhance your professional practice is it auditable and is it verifiable and if you can answer yes to those three things then you can include it in the self-directed hours there's a number of brokers here that are wondering they already provide training at the broker office. Uh, is this going to be a benefit to the licensees in such a way, and the brokerage in such a way that the training they already provide will account if it's one hour increments towards self-directed learning? And I think that's a great question and one that I'm pretty excited about because now at managing brokers that we know do an incredible job in content and training of their realtors will actually be able to give our or like professional development hours for that training and hopefully bring in more people into the brokerage and getting more training. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that that's a pretty exciting opportunity and you and I have spoken about that of how we see that happening within our brokerages even. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how about mentorship? I somebody wants to know, okay, at some of the brokerages, they have mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. If they, will that be uh, verifiable and auditable and, and agreeable to the program to allow for mentorship to account for hours? I think there's a couple of different questions. Is it being a mentor or is it actually um, being the mentee, um, first of all? And again, I think that they would have to go back to, does it answer those three questions? Does it enhance your professional practice? Is it verifiable? And is it audible? Mm -hmm. Auditable. Right, okay. So I'm not sure if we've covered this one or not. It's coming a few times. How will the hours be tracked? Will the managing broker be responsible to submit a tracking of the verifiable hours or will the licensee realtor be responsible for that? And how will they do that? Okay, so it is, it'll be the realtor's responsibility for um, reporting their own self-directed hours. And they there will be a reporting mechanism and uh, realtors will do it through their primary member board. Um, exactly what that looks like at each board is still being developed and um, we'll have plenty of information about that as we get closer um, to the launch date. Yeah, so we do have a really good baseline that will be consistent throughout the province and I think that, that that's already been established but it's what additional information boards may want to um, still require. So if the self-directed learning six hours is uh, tracked by, is it tracked by the boards? 
Is it verified by the so boards? With this, so we'll have to, they'll have a submission. The realtors will submit. I have fulfilled the requirement of 18 hours total, six of which were self-directed, 12 of which were through professional loan programs offered by the board, BCREA. I can just sort of anticipate uh, staffing on this to verify the the you know how auditable those those hours are. So, are you putting a recommendation in place, maybe to submit? a month in advance or a couple of months in advance rather than waiting for the last day to submit yeah. for a renewal of your membership at the board? Yeah, yeah, we're really going to encourage realtors to submit as they take their courses and as they take those um, or any kind of actually opportunity. It wouldn't have to necessarily be a course, but as they take those self-directed learning opportunities to submit it right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, another question that speaks to the the clarity of the distinction between the realtor brand and licensing requirements. Uh, this person is assuming that these professional development hours are only for licensees who are members of a board. Can you please clarify many licensees within owner developer companies opt out of board membership? Yeah, so the professional development program is for realtors in the province of BC, not for licensees. Licensees have to do their mandatory licensing education through council. This is for all the realtors in the province who are members of the local real estate boards and members of CREA. Good. Uh, we covered this a little bit already, but just to make sure there's absolute clarity, does this mean that legal update is no longer mandatory? <laughs> legal update legal update is mandatory for your license with the Real Estate Council of British Columbia. So if you would like to maintain your license to practice real estate in the province of British Columbia, yes, you need to do legal update and any other requirements to maintain the, your license with the Real Estate Council of British Columbia. The PDP program is separate from that and, um, and the hours for taking legal update are not counted in this system because the, the idea being that all realtors who have this professional development also have a license. So everybody already has those. The expectation is that sort of the minimum requirement for entry is to have your license. And so the requirement will have already been met by all realtors through the Real Estate Council. And the whole idea and premise behind the professional development program is it goes above and beyond, right? It's that, that added quality, that added value that we bring to our clients. Yeah, I agree. Uh, somebody's asking if there's any variation from one board to another on the program. Uh, I guess if there, maybe if there's a member at the South Okanagan uh, Real Estate Board to compare to, will the program look different there from the program at the Chilliwacken District Real Estate Board? The, the program is province-wide. All um, 11 member boards and BCREA have worked collaboratively over a number of months to, to build out a program that we all agree on and will all su subscribe to. Um, and then there may be minor differences in administration at the board level based on you know, how, how members interact, their, their member profiles and that kind of thing. And, that, and what I'm referring to there is how, how you might report at one board might even though the same information will be required at all boards, it might look a little bit different at each board um, because they have different platforms. Yeah. Um, but the, the program in its sense is province-wide. Right, okay, so where, where are our realtors going to be able to locate a list of accredited courses that are available for them to choose from? I think this probably speaks to what they're already used to in terms of go to the board for the professional development program courses that are available for the accredited courses, the self-directed, this might, they may be speaking to where do we look for the list of self-directed allowable courses. That's really up to, I think, the realtor to go in and just have that flexibility to now choose whatever they want to choose. But before, I guess we could caution them before they pay money for a self-directed course, they would want to confirm the verifiability of that course. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be auditable enough for the member board to, to approve that. Sure. Would there be a process there? Uh, or a recommendation that before they spend money on a self-directed learning course, maybe consult with the board first? There's a couple things that you're talking about there. Um, one is going back to um, how will realtors know what's accredited and what's not. And we will be um, maintain a re maintaining a repository of all the courses that have been accredited and, um, and how those will be and how they'll be presented, that's still getting built out. So I don't wanna overpromise before we know 
what that platform and what that will, will look like, but we are building that and we will have that um, available um, to realtors so that they can find accredited courses um, in, across the province. So that's the first thing. The, on the self-directed, um, how realtors might find self-directed is interesting and it might be um, a lot might be involved um, some self-initiative into looking at finding the gaps of where do you want to learn, where do you need to learn or develop or grow in your business or in your practice, and then looking for those opportunities and searching them out and speaking to managing brokers and speaking to other colleagues. Um, and part of that, what we will be doing is building out resources and support mechanisms to help people know where to look and where to find good resources. So that, that's part of what we'll be developing in the coming months. But realistically, I think that will evolve and, and grow um, in the new program. So, so I'm excited about what that can bring. Um, and I think you had one other question in there. Did I, did I answer your question? I think you were pretty yeah. thorough. Okay, so all right. Good. <laughs> Moving on. There is another good question here. Uh, this, is, this is great. These are all great questions, by the way. I love this one. Where will the mandatory licensing programs now be taken and tracked, if not through professional development program and the member boards? And I guess, in other words, how, how does a, a realtor – we're looking at two reporting systems here. Yeah. The realtor is responsible to report the, their, the, the hours that are accumulated to renew their membership at the board. How are they responsible to report that they've successfully passed the mandatory licensing program courses for council? Absolutely, and those are, it, it's exactly the same as you've been doing it in the past, is that that's, that's through council, and when you go and fill in your application for council, you'll have to upload them, um, upload the completion certificates from those courses, but that's separate. That is council's purview and and definitely um, up to council as to how they track and how reportable their their mechanisms are for mandatory licensing education right good okay so what about tutors somebody hires a tutor to teach them real estate i guess that falls into the mentoring category uh, a lot of licensees will graduate from you know from the applied practice course get ready to sell real estate but they really need some mentorship and there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time there <laughs> Uh, could that be verifiable or could that be auditable? Yeah, I, it might be a gray area and, and looking into exploring, you know, um, and, you know, it sounds like it would answer the, um, does it enhance your professional practice? And, and yes, then where, whether it's verifiable and auditable um, is a gray area. And we're going to be developing tools and resources to help realtors put some boundaries on that and to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, for, you know, you talked about mentorship and you talked about tutoring and, you know, going out for a coffee and having a conversation is not something that really maintains the rigor and, and the integrity of the, the program, all great, and I encourage you to do that, and valuable, without a doubt. But, you know, what we're talking about here is really investing in, in, a, in a program that, you know, and investing in learning opportunities that are going to enhance. And so that's why that auditable and verifiable are so important. Um, and, and we will build out some clarity around that so that people can make good decisions um, for themselves around that. Okay. Uh, again, this is a repeat question, but I think if they're repeating uh, themselves, we should probably speak to that. Realtors can uh, still take 18 hours of professional development courses to meet the needs similar to the past. The new change is that we can take 12 plus optional six. They just want some clarification yeah, there. Yeah, that's it's correct. Optional six. It's not that they're optional. <laughs> so I yeah. think I need to, yeah. to make sure we uh, hit on that. Um, it is 18 hours of professional development, but it allows for up to six hours of self-accredited or self-directed, self sorry. <laughs> um, so where they can be self-reflective in their practice and learn, um, identify learning opportunities that will benefit them and their clients most. Okay. And one question here coming in asking, and I've seen this three times on the feed, will there be a cost for the self-directed program? I, maybe they're asking if there's an additional cost to whatever it is for the cost of the actual course itself that they choose. Yeah, I, I guess it depends what you choose. Um, somebody might choose to take a course at, um, at you know, a higher learning institution, for example, and of course there's tuition costs to that. Um, somebody might choose to go to a conference. Of course, there's the cost of the registration. Some conferences are very expensive, but also very useful and very great. Other conferences can also be really great and have um, a lower cost structure. Um, so I think, you know, a realtor has the opportunity to determine how they want to spend their professional development dollars in that self-directed place. There's also great learning opportunities that are quite inexpensive and, and others that you really do invest. 
um, a lot financially. So, so that would be up to the individual realtor to see what the cost benefit analysis for themselves of, of what, how they want to pursue that learning. Great. Good. That's very clear. Thank you, Joanna, Jennifer. We're going to wrap it up. We're running out of time here for today. So thank you everybody for attending. Thank you for your questions. And thank you so much for being here with us on the webinar for revitalizing the professional development program. And, and uh, today's webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. Just as a reminder, and you'll receive a link to the recording in your webinar follow-up email from Zoom. We will use all the questions that were submitted during the webinar session on May 2nd, as well as today's session, to assess what themes have emerged and where realtors need the most support. We'll use the questions and comments you submit today to develop resources to support you during the transition to the new program. We'll also share written responses to the questions that we answer live today, as well as to some of the questions that we don't have a chance to get to on Realtor Link. If you have additional questions, you can send them to pdpeducation at bcrea.bc.ca or contact your local member board. I want to thank you again for attending the webinar today. Have a great day. Thank you.